Hi everybody and big welcome to CDHTV with a competitive commander gameplay video. Now in this match, you're gonna see all of our hands, you're gonna hear our thought process and our reactions to plays that are being made during the entire game. But this time we wanted to do something new, we wanted to replay a tournament match. Just replaying final pods from various tournaments, this might definitely be something we're gonna do more in the future. We decided to actually start with a tournament that both me and Pontus actually attended too. It's an ongoing regular tournament called Tier 1 Com that happens in Denmark every August. And by the way, if you want to come and fist pump and meet in reality and actually play some games face to face, we're actually going to be there next August as well. I will leave a link to their information in the description below of the video. And it was an awesome event and I hope to see you there. But now let's take a look at decks and opening hands. All right, new game on Blue Farm. This is my baby. I love this deck. Nice hand. Can I try some spicy stuff turn one or I might wheel turn one. We'll see what happens. Hope you enjoy it. So in tier one con sick robot, the actual person who won the entire tournament played Cody the Codex and that's what I'm running with today. It's a very simple deck. You cast Cody, you activate Cody, you flip until you find Profane Tutor, you cast Profane Tutor and you flip Ad Nauseam. Then you cast Ad Nauseam from the mana that you acquired from Cody and you need to fiddle a little bit to get the two black mana here. And then you basically Ad Nauseam from the command zone. Our opening seven is absolutely god amazing. We have a turn one Cody from the Yud Lotus. We have a turn one one training grounds and we have a turn two Cody activation the finding brain tutor costing Dodnos or bring to light and yeah this looks good what's up guys uh Jordan here with Kinnon Bonder Prodigy deck looks to make infinite mana with my commander and a mana rock and then do silly things like put big creatures into play or draw my whole deck and then win with Thassa's Oracle. It's a pretty sweet deck, pretty explosive. Looking forward to playing it. Hopefully it works out. Uh, so this is our opening seven. I was hoping for a bit of interaction because we're against two Turbo Nas decks and a Croc Sakashima, but this is just such an explosive start that I think I need to keep this. So we're going to, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully it works out. We'll see. All right, today I'm playing Krark Sakashima. The main game plan of the deck is to cast Krark and then find ways to copy him, either with Y effects like Twin Flame, which works because of Sakashima, or with uh, trigger copying effects such as Wayrun and Harmonic's, Harmonic Prodigy and other cards. And then hopefully into so something like Grape Shot or Dual Cast Mage or a Storm Spell in general. So my first starting hand is really interesting. It's loads of mana, it's a turn one Krark into turn two Sakashima with some counter backup and a solo solve the equation pretty sweet. I'm not actually that well versed in the deck. This might be a trap hand, but I think it's it looks really great and I really want to play it, so I will keep this hand. But if it's a trap, I guess I will learn from my mistakes. And with this, let's start the game. I will draw a card, I'll play a Bloodstained Mire, I'll take a damage, I'll crack it, I'll grab an Underground C, and if it's okay, I'll like to Imperial C at the same time. I pass. Cool, I'll put something to the top and then I'll just pass turn. I'm so utterly happy that he puts an Underground C into play here, that means I can do Carpet and Training Grounds as well. Draw a card for the turn. Here is a Mana Confluence, here is a Yud Lotus, here is a Carpet of Flowers. I would like to go to my second main phase. I will use the carpet targeting Anis and make a blue mana and cast Training Grounds. Then I'm gonna sacrifice Yud Lotus for free red mana and cast Coded Codex. I feel happy. I pass. I will go to my turn. I am going to play Command Tower. I am going to play a Mana Vault. I am going to play a Felwar Stone. I am going to play a... I'm going to play a Springleaf Drum. I'm going to pass the turn. Take my turn. Land for turn will be a Command Tower. Cast a Mana Crypt. Tap Mana Crypt for a Arcane Signet. Tap Arcane Signet for a Springleaf Drum. Uh, so I forgot that we had a code in this pod, which is kind of a bad thing to forget about. Uh, I'm keeping Stifle up because he has activation next turn. I'm pretty sure Stifle can counter the trigger on Cody. Otherwise I'm just screwed and have no interaction. So yeah, uh, keeping Stifle up wasn't the plan, but I think that's necessary. So hopefully it doesn't come to me being the only one with interaction is that's probably not enough but yeah we'll see with that i'll pass the turn uh yeah all right start on my turn i'm going to play a lotus petal and i'm going to tap my exotic orchard i'm going to play a ride of flame uh, if that's all right i'll then use these two reds and i'll play a dark side uh, so jordan do you have any interaction for this at all i do not oh, then this dark side will help to resolve because this is not a guaranteed loss yeah but yeah if we let bonds go without interaction then we lose yeah okay well oh well 
Darn. All right, I'll have uh, nine treasures. I am going to let's see how many. One Adnos. I mean, I mean, guys, you could you could counter his Adnos, or you could counter my Adnos, or you could counter his Adnos as it's happening now. <laughs> so I'm gonna be perfectly straight with you guys. You don't actually have anything. You're lying all along. My counter is a stifle. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> are you serious? Why are you playing stifle? <laughs> You could have oh, stopped his. So, so like I could have stopped side trigger. Side trigger or the Cody trigger to fetch the zero drop. Uh, yeah, but I cannot well, count late a, now. I cannot we're, count we're the Adnos, Sadly, <laughs> I, I I was thinking about maybe like I should have maybe I should have done something where I Adnos on top of uh, his Adnos or his Silence or whatever. That might have been a better play. Uh, but yeah, I currently have probably the strongest Cody opening I've ever had in my entire life, and I'm losing before I get to my turn two. Yes. Uh, Yay. That's the nature of the beast. So. Yeah. Welcome to tier one, Con. All right, time to add knots. So 38 still. Seven. Yeah, I'll just stop there. Putting all these bad boys into my hand. So she playing my diamond if i can find it let's go minus two i'll play a breach tap crack my lotus petal play a drc play my diabolic intent that's somewhere here in my hand sacrificing dark side surveil trigger putting spire industry into my graveyard Cube library grabbing a, a card shuffling playing an led uh cracking my led dumping my hand into my graveyard i'll crack it for three white i'll play a silence graveyard oh yeah surveil trigger i'll put this mana vault into my graveyard uh using uh, one of the white floating and tapping my mox diamond i'm just gonna uh, replay my diabolic intent sacrificing my drc um putting this talisman into my graveyard put a card into my hand i'm gonna excel these three for the diabolic intent and then i'm gonna crack my treasure use the last blue and i'm gonna cast brain freeze targeting myself here i now have the classic Unroll Breach, Lineside Diamond, Brain Freeze. This way I can put my, I can dump my entire library into my graveyard and then I can just keep escaping stuff. Yeah, I mill myself out and then I'll cast my own Oracle and then I'll have an Oracle trigger with an empty library and then yeah, GG. Congratulations, Anes. Now that was such a fast match that we decided to do another one. So let's look at some new opening hands. This time we're the starting player, kinda happy about that, not that happy about his hand compared to the previous hand that we had, so we're gonna mulligan this one. If we just had a land, this would have been interesting, but we don't have a land, so we're have, we gotta have to mulligan this, it's really sad. Gemstone Cavern is good here, but we are also again the starting player. No, we're gonna have to go down again. This is a turn to Dockside. Considering how the previous game looked for Alnis turn to Dockside, I kinda wanna keep it. Yeah, we also have a Swan Song. We have Yeska's will. So I think this is the hand I'm gonna keep. Also, I don't really wanna go down deeper. It's not great, but this hand could get somewhere. So that was a quick game. After game two, I had to go to five to find the keepable hand, but this one is pretty great, actually. I have loads of interaction. I have turned one Clark with Fierce Guardianship. Fierce Guardianship is really hard to get through for, for people because the, it's, it will guaranteed be two counter spells coming at them. And I have a Stifle, which I guess is cute to try something, maybe. And after like interacting, I will hopefully draw into mana to play it, as well. Yeah, I'm not going lower, and this one will help me not losing early. All right, hand for this game, uh, looking kind of sweet, kind of nice, dark side into a diabolic intent, and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. All right, uh, this is our second seven. It's not the best hand, but we are player four, and we're against two Turbo Adnos players, and we can have a Mana Drain open for the first turn cycle, so it's not great, but hopefully I can counter a Adnos and then get Nezahal out on turn two, which would be sweet. So that's the plan. Uh, it's not the best plan, but it is a plan. I have a pre-game action. I would like to play a Gemstone Caverns, exiling a Mystic Reflection. And you are good to start. Starting off the match, drawing a card for the turn. Ah, oh, that's actually good. Let's start with a Gitaxion Probe, targeting... Um, I would like to look at Anis' hand. 
All right, my hand is this one. That's my hand. So Anis also has a currently turn to Dockside. What a mimic. Sadly, he doesn't have a single artifact to fuel my Dockside, which is a little bit sad. He doesn't have anything that is scaring me that much, though. So it's just that he has a Dockside. I will play an Underground C and I will pass the turn. Take my turn. Uh, Land of the turn is a Prismatic Vista. Fetch, finding a island, casting a Jeweled Lotus, cracking it for three red to cast a card. Then I will pass the turn. Cool. Go to my turn. Draw a card. Um, I will play a Wind's Teeth and I'll pass my turn. Okay, I will go to my turn. Okay, so this is an interesting draw. Um, I my plan originally was to open, yeah, uh, play land and pass and just hold up a mana drain, but that's kind of just like playing to lose almost, or playing not to lose. And if I play the Sylvan Library, I could draw cards and like hopefully get me into this game because being player four is tough. So I think with that said, I'm going to play the Sylvan Library because, like I said, I think it gives me a better chance to win than just to hope I get to mana drain something big and cast in as a whole. Alright, I'm gonna play a Tropical Island and top two and cast a Sylvan Library. And uh, with that, I'll pass the turn. Draw a card. So this didn't turn out great. My my dock side is currently generating one mana. At least that's the same thing for Anis as well. Really sad here. My entire game plan hinged on dock side actually getting me out of this situation. And that kind of backfired. I guess we have to pass the turn and hope the brainstorm delivers something good next turn. I play this Taiga and I pass the turn. In your end step, I'll attempt to cast a brainstorm. Fork trigger. Let's say I get it, tail side up, get it. And so I get two copies. I'll just draw four, put two back. Uh, so because how brainstorm works, you will always draw one more than you put back. Therefore, I can shortcut this by drawing four and putting two back because I would put two back and then draw the third either way. I would see all the four cards either way. I'm just drawing four and putting two back. I'm putting these two back. Go to my turn. And for turn will be a Cascade Bluff. I will tap Cascade Bluff for a Mana Vault. Then I'll tap Mana Vault and Island for a Sakashima. In response, to Sakashima of a thousand faces being on the stack. I'm gonna first fetch a land. I'm gonna grab a uh, tundra. And then I'm gonna tap the tundra and I'm gonna put a March of Swirling Mist on the stack, exiling a Cyclonic Rift as I'm casting it. Targeting your card. Because Sakashima, even though he doesn't target or anything, as like as it's on the stack, you, you still need to have the permanent on the field for Sakashima to be able to enter as a copy of it. So what I'm doing here is I'm so I'm making Kark phase out until Pontus's next uh on tap step, uh, there's no Clark on the table, so Akashima doesn't have anything else to copy. Genius play, Anis. Thumbs up. In response, uh, I'll cast the first card and ship in response. Pretty good card. But I'll just, there's nothing affecting the cost, so I'll just cast it until I have two copies on the stack. Are you things with March's Whirling Mist? In response to your Clark trigger on the stack, I'm gonna tap this for blue and cast a Swan Song on the original Fierce Guardianship, sending it to the graveyard before you have a chance of returning it back to your hand. It is countered. Dark trigger. Heads, I get a, co uh, get a copy. It will probably look if I can see the flip in the uh, boarding as well. Heads, I get a copy. It's a tails and you don't see it. As I flip the tail, tails. So it is gone. I first card will not counter March, March of Swirling Mist. We're in an interesting spot here. Both of the Turbo Adnos players has had play pretty slow hands. I kind of think it might be safe to spend all our interaction. Uh, like having Sakashima and Sakashima Sak 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 isn't the worst worst thing in the world. Like it still has the legend rule doesn't apply, I just don't get two Krarks. Uh, so it's not the worst thing to happen, but I really want two Krarks. That might just be greed for me. Uh, we're also in a pretty bad place because we're drawing Void Snare next turn and that doesn't help us all too much. It kind of does because we can balance Cody, which ones we'll probably play next turn. But since I don't see them as an immediate threat, I will actually spend my counter here. I might just fail and then it doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, because I only have one try on Force of Will, and I don't have two triggers on the stack, two correct triggers. Best case scenario, I, I still think this is the play to make for me. So in response to Marsh, I cast Force, Pitching Stifle, Quark Trigger. This, this guy, guys. This, this guy. Passing on the card trigger. Flipping a coin. Heads, I get a copy. It's heads, two forces, targeting Swirl. Sakashima back on stack. Uh, Sakashima will enter as a copy of Quark, and then I will pass the turn. Playing Ancient Tomba. Play a Mox Diamond Pitching Underground Sea, and I'm gonna tap 4 4 Timna, then I'll pass. Alright, I will go to my turn and uh, draw 3 of Silver Library. I will keep all 3 cards and lose 8 life. I'm going to play a Force, a Chrome Mox Exiling Neoform, and I think I'm just passing the turn. Drawing a card, Demonic Tutor. 
searching for a card and almost find Adnos. Because with Adnos in my hand next turn, if I don't draw land, I can cast Dockside, gain three treasures as it currently looks like, maybe more next turn as well. Use one of those to sacrifice, no, to play my Reign of Filth, to start sacrificing my lands, to also play, pay for my Adnos. It's actually not all the way, but yes, yes, we could help out too. If I draw a land and if they put one more rock enchantment into play, we have it. So I actually think I'm in a tutor for Adnos straight up here. Take my turn, take one damage from Mana Vault. I'll tap one blue, we float two blue off Cascade Bluffs. I'll use one of those blue to cast a Void Snare, targeting my own Mana Vault. So I will have two Croc Triggers here, and the alternatives are two tails, where my Void Snare goes back to my hand and nothing happens, one heads and one tail, where the copy resolves and the original goes back to my hand and the copy can target something else or I get two heads and then I have three three void snares to resolve removing all but one of the non-token uh, or the non-land permanents I do not control I flip one heads one tails so the copy will or get my mana vault still and the spell will go back to my hand then with the blue floating I will recast my mana vault and then I will pass turn I will go to my turn interesting interesting I will first move to combat would be so kind as to take two damage. I'm gonna take two damage. Uh, post combat, I am uh, going to heal Juan. Going up to 40. I'm going to draw a card. I'm gonna take two damage. I'm gonna tap my Mox Diamond as well. And use uh, a colorless floating and a red. I'm gonna play Darkseid. Darkseid, okay. What is that? Two treasures, I believe. Or tap one. I'm gonna play an F for the Sentinel. Gonna tap. Yeah, I'm gonna tap three and play a Wheel of Fortune. Uh, I would like to respond. I am going to uh, tap two and Mana Drain. Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, I'll just pass it. Alright, sweet. I will add three colorless to my next turn. Am I good to go to my turn? Alright, sweet. Uh, go to my turn. Uh, Sublime Library Trigger. I am once again going to keep all three cards and pay eight life. Play a Mana Confluence. Use the three colorless from uh, my Mana Drain and tap four to cast a Nessa Hall. And if that is good, I will pass the turn. I'm gonna cry as I pass priority on that thing. Alright, so our plan kind of worked. We got our Nessa Hall. Uh, we're we're not in the greatest spot, our Sylvan Libraries have not been the best for us, but uh, with this guy out, hopefully we can draw enough to, uh, and it really hurts the Adnos players. So um, I think we're in an okay spot now. I'm gonna go to my turn and draw a card and pl play a Mr. Rainforest. Should I almost go for it here? I, if I'm going for it, I can go for it. They, they fueled Dockside here enough. All of them are tapped out. Jordan has just used his mana drain. The chance of Jordan drawing into Force and Pact is pretty good with his Nessa Hall. But I think if I just sit here, I will lose anyway. Like, this isn't going to get better. The situation is just going to get worse. So I think I sh definitely should go for it here. I'm gonna cast a Dockside Extortionist. I'm gonna generate one, two, three, four, five treasures total. All of those treasures add NOS. Esper Sentinel draws a card. Right, I will draw off uh, Nezahal. Don't look at me, I don't have the Nezahal, I'm passing. Resolving Adnos. 34, 32, 31, 28. Good mana rock. 26, 24, 21. Ouch. 17, another good mana rock. Still 17, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. Another great mana rock. 8. Five. So I could die now. I have Peer inside this deck somewhere. Do I have the win here though? I currently don't have the win. But I have a meme betrayal. So I have one cool trick I can do. I can play Brain Freeze to basically mill someone a lot and then meme betrayal that person. That's cool. So considering that I do have a small chance of winning here from a brain freeze meme betrayal, which is kind of cool too. I c and I could lose by just continue digging with Adnos, flipping a peer into the abyss, or a force of will for that matter. I'm actually gonna stop here and kind of hope for it. First thing first, we're gonna, no, we're gonna sacrifice this. I'm gonna find a tropical island. Tap that one to pongify Nessa Hall getting rid of it. You can draw a card, my friend. Might be your last. Um. I will draw off the Pognify. All right, I will discard three cards to, to exile Nazal. I'll discard a Burden Catacombs, a Windswept Teeth, Doom Tender. 
and Nezahal is gone. Now, Nezahal is still in play, but he's going away, so he won't do anything more this turn, which is actually what I wanted, so I'm, I'm fine with this outcome. Then I will continue. I don't need to worry about Nezahal anymore. I will cast Mox Diming, pitching this fetch land, cast this Crow Mox in printing this Force of Negation, cast this Mox Upol, tap this for black, cast Rain of Filth, sacrifice all my free lands, for free black. I'm gonna cast Snapback, targeting my dock side by exiling this Mystic Remora. So I don't need to pay mana for Snapback, sending dock side back to my hand. I will tap this for a red mana and use one of the black mana to cast dock side. This is going to generate another five treasures again. I will cast Jeska's Will. Jeska's Will is only going to generate free mana here, but the plan is to cast Brain Freeze. So I'm using free treasures to basically increase the storm by one. That's everything it does. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna use the last two black mana and cast Grim Monolith. Tap the Grim Monolith, floating a colorless, cast Arcane Signet. Tap this and use the last colorless to cast Brain Freeze. The obvious target here is, of course, Anis. Because Anis is on red, he is the deck that is most similar to mine. He has an Undual Breach in his deck. He has a bunch of other cards that I really like inside my deck as well. So if I hit Undual Breach here, I think I have it. Actually, I want to do one more thing. I want to increase the storm rate by one by casting this Rite of Flame using a treasure gaining free red. Uh, so yeah, I mill 39 cards and for me you get a Chrome Mod. Uh, key cards, in my opinion, would probably be Petal, Opal, Nap for more mana, Zvin's Wreck, maybe, I don't know, uh, Gamble, Chrome Mock, LED, have a Vamp as well. You could literally just do Pair as well. I think you can easily make the mana. Yeah, I just like doing Pair Wars here. Uh, I also have an Oracle here. Oh, you have a Crypt there as well. Do a Chain of Vapor. Um, oh, there's a Mana Vault here, apparently. Yeah, there's a Mana Vault as well. And a Fell War Stone, that as well. And yo, oh, there's a D Tutor here as well. A Cabal. Route. I have a ranger captain as well if you want to be safe. I mean, yeah, it's, it was more than enough 50 cards ago, I think. Okay, I, I think I have a puzzle here. So what we're gonna do is first use one of the red, tap this arcane signet, go down a treasure and call Memonic Betrayal. Meme Betray resolves, I get all the cool cards from Anis over there. So we're gonna first just cast the Lotus Petal, we're gonna cast the... We're gonna cast the Mox Opal, which means my Ox, Mox Opal go to the graveyard, so I get a new Mox Opal. I will cast the Lion's Eye Diamond, I will tap the cr cr Mana Crypt to cast Mox Mana Vault and Fellow Stone. Actu actually, be because uh, we can use any mana of whatever we want to cast spells from Mop Betray, we don't wanna cast Fellow Stone because we don't actually need to color fix here. Then... All we need to do here is just tap that Mana Crypt to cost your Demonic Tutor for two colors instead of any black here. Tutor my deck for a Demonic Consultation. We want to tap your Mana Vault to cost Ranger Captain of Eos. Then we want to sacrifice Ranger Captain of Eos so you guys can't cast spells during my turn. I want to cost your Fastest Oracle with the two treasures that I have or some of your mana that you have. And then I want to cast my Demonic Consultation with my Mox Opal. And that should be game. I won with Cody! Anis with blue farm wins, Mons with Cody wins. Clearly, Ardnos is good. Well, it was close. Uh, the Jeskis will probably have gotten us there with two cracks, but sadly we didn't get there. Mons got there before us. Yeah, no, thought we had a strong opener, but Mons played it well. Brain froze me and won with my deck, I want to point out. 